Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Is my hand waving to you. My name is Wen Wen Fu. Or in Chinese, we kind of say it um, backwards. So we go by last name first. So uh, in Chinese, my name is Lu Wen Wen. But most people just call me Cherry, like the fruit. I am um, around, let's say, one sixty centimeters tall. I have black hair, currently in a ponytail. I have glasses. And I am waving hello. Oh, I forgot eyebrows. Okay. I am a visual artist or a multimedia artist. So that means I like to draw, I like to paint, and I like to make sculptures as well. Let's see, this is my hammer. And I also like to animate them. So um, I can create little drawings and give them movement. Um, I like to explore things that are small, um, hidden, and forgotten. I am currently living and learning in the ancestral lands of the Hakomelem. Hakomelem, um, ancestral um, lands, and the Squamish speaking peoples. or also known as Burnaby. Now, today we are going to be exploring something called hidden colors. Um, so it started with the idea, have you ever wondered what if I have no paintbrush Um, no um, paper and um, none of those tools um, that you normally use to create. What if I have none of them? What can I use to do uh, mark making? And what can I use to create? So we are going to be exploring some of the hidden colors that is around us. So we're going to look closely 
and we're gonna see what are some of the colors we have that surrounds us. And we're gonna look for them and we're gonna be using them to create, to create marks, to paint with, and to explore. So our theme for today is exploring hidden colors. Whoops, art with everyday tools. Now, before we go, we need to remember our rule, which is to respect. Um, because we're going to be using uh, found colors, we need to respect uh, what the land has grown for us. So that, um, that means that we only harvest a little bit. Okay, and then we also need to respect our friends and our family members who has worked hard um, to provide us with what we have. So um, we need to make sure to ask permission and we need to make sure that when we harvest uh, materials that we're going to be using, that we only grab a tiny bit. Okay, so we are going to be exploring um, on with the found colors. So remember to ask for permission to respect the land that we grow, to respect our friends and family, our guardians, um, for providing us with what we have, and to make sure that we only grab just a little bit. Um, and we try our best to use the scraps the leftovers, and the things um, that we would normally be composting, okay? So those are the things that we will be using. And if you're ready, let's go and explore and see what are some hidden colors that we can find around us. This is my sauce shelf. It is full of bottles and containers of different size and colors. Let's see what colors we can find here. This is um, purple potato powder. It has a nice purple color. Perhaps we can use this for some of our hidden colors. Oh, we have food coloring. These will make really good inks. There is some soy sauce. There's a nice dark brown. And there is also some cocoa powder. Maybe that will create a different kind of brown. What are some colors that you can find? What are some colors that you see that is around you? This is my spice drawer. It's full of little jars of different colors. Um, let's see what colors we can find here. We got some bright yellow. Um, I think this is turmeric. We can smell it to see um, what spice it is. There's also some reddish orange. I think this is cayenne. There is some brown for cinnamon. Kind of a brownish reddish color. You can also see the black of the sesame seed. And there's some light yellowish green from the rosemary. What are some colors that you can smell? This is a chopping board. Let's see what are some colors and shapes of the vegetables that we use. Um, I like the color of the beet. It has a nice pinkish um, purple color. And the color of the carrot is nice and bright as well. This is a carrot stem. Perhaps we can use this for um, one of our colors. 
the texture of the bok choy stem is also really fun. Perhaps we can get some white with the um, this color. We also have some tomato. We also have some green onion uh, leaves. Look at the uh, roots. Perhaps you can use it to um, paint with. There are so many different textures and shapes um, in the vegetables around us. What are some shapes of your colors? This is my cutlery drawer. It is full of utensils that we normally use to eat. But perhaps we can find some nice mark making tools in here as well. We have some chopsticks. There's a thicker end and a smaller end. Perhaps we can use them to create little dots. We have here a fork. It has four little spikes. Perhaps we can use these to create some uh, marks. We also have a spoon. We can maybe create some little circular motions with this. There's also bigger spoons. These are used normally for soups, but perhaps you can use them to scoop inks and pour, or you can use the back to create um, other marks as well. We also have some piping bags. They have some piping bag tips. They have all have some different shapes to them. Perhaps we can use them to create different kinds of marks. What are some everyday tools that you see? I hope you had some fun exploring. Now food is a very important part of my culture. We eat lots of different kinds of food and dishes. And I've always really loved watching my family cook and try to explore some of the materials that they use. And that will be some of the materials that we'll be using today. Now let's see what are some of the hidden colors that we found. We have here some turmeric. This is the bright yellow color here. We also have some dark brown soy sauce. We have some cinnamon, some cayenne pepper, and some purple yam powder. That is the purple one here. And also I found some tea. These are some really cold tea that I found in the sink. And of course we have our natural, well, not very natural, but kitchen inks, which is our food coloring. We have here um, blue, yellow, green, and red. These will be our inks for today. We also have um, some of our vegetables or vegetable scraps. We have some beets. They are a nice pink color. We have some um, tomato. Remember, this is also just a stem. And that gives us a nice red. We have some um, onion ends. We have some bok choy. And we have a carrot end. We can explore and see what colors that they will um, create. And then we also looked for some mark making tools. We have found um, let's see, a chopstick. We found some spoons. There's some two different sizes. We found a fork. And we also found, I think this is a sauce brush. 
brush. I'm not quite sure what it is called, but it has some nice little bristles. Sauce brush. And I also found some straws. These are some metal straws. One is um, for normal drinking and the other one is for bubble tea. Perhaps we can um, use them to create some circles. These are metal ones, so they can be reused. And then also we found some pipe, a piping tip. Maybe they can also create some different circles. So these are our mark making tools um, that we found. We do not always need to have a pencil or a pen to create our artworks. We can use whatever we can find around us and explore what are some um, marks that they can make. So make sure to um, give yourself a nice working space, lay out your materials, so then they can be uh, within reach and you can see all the different things that you have around you. I also brought over some rags and a jar of water just in case so that we can be on messy as we need to. Oh, and also some of the perfect um, drawing or painting materials are our fingers. We have thumb, we have pinky, they can create all kinds of different marks. So if you ever get a little bit messy, you can just use your rag and your water to keep things tidy. Some of the things that we can use to paint on um, are, I have some here, some off-cut watercolor paper. So these are just off-cuts that I normally um, use for my work. And there's some um, end paper. So you can, if you want, you can use some paper. You can use scrap off cuts. Now if you do not have any of these at home, one of um, some of the things I used to, I really used to um, love um, to paint on when I'm um, not um, at home or in my studio are napkins. We have some white ones and we have some brown ones. These all also make nice working surfaces as well. Now remember before we start, there is no um, expectations. We are just playing and exploring. And all the things that we will make um, at the end of the day can go into the compost. So let's just have some fun and explore some of the colors that we see. Let's see. The first thing I think I would like to play with is a chopstick. I use this to eat every day. Let's see what kind of mark making I can um, create. Maybe we'll try it with the dark soy sauce. Ooh. It creates some nice um, rounds. I'm creating some little dots and now I'm dragging them around to see what are some lines that I can create. What if I add a little bit of water to it? It creates a nice uh, lighter yellow color. And it also makes the, um, when I drag the um, chopstick, it makes some smoother lines. You see how this one has a more of a texture? These ones, you can create some smoother wiggly lines. Oh, maybe I can fan this one out. Let's see, maybe we can try a napkin. I might want to cut this a little bit smaller because I don't want to be using the whole thing. We 
guess you can also rip it. It will create some nice edges as well. Maybe we can play with some of our food coloring. Maybe we can use um, one of the spoons. We can try to see the back of the spoon. Oh, I like how it kind of fans out. What if I add some water first and then add our coloring on top? Notice that when it's on the dry, it can create more fuzzy marks. And when it is wet, you can see more of the wrinkles and the texture of the surface that we're working on. I like the brightness of the food coloring, but I also really like the uh, more muted tones of our soy sauce. Perhaps you can play with some of our other found colors. We have here um, some of the turmeric. Maybe we can see what colors it creates. I'm just pushing it down. So then the powders. Ooh, I like the smudginess. Do you see that light yellow haze? And you can really smell the turmeric. Also the soy sauce too. What happens if we mix a little bit of water with it? I'm gonna put some water here. Spoon over some turmeric. And now I'm mixing it with my finger to see if then I can create. I can see that the yellow is a little bit more intense now. Do you see the difference? It is a nice bright yellow. Let's see what other, what are the other colors. We have some cayenne. That one does not smudge as well. It does not stain the paper like the turmeric does. Let's see what happens when we mix it with a bit of water. You can see that the color, um, the pigment or the spice does not really blend with the water. Oh, but it still creates a nice, mm, I don't know, like a light brown. That's quite a pretty color. Maybe we can play with it later. Let's see what the cinnamon does. We'll put this in this corner. Ooh, I like the light brown of the synonym. Let's see what happens when we mix it with a little bit of water. Mm, that is a nice um, muted tone. But I also have other pigments in my hand. So maybe this one is closer to the mixture of those three. I'm very excited to try um, the purple um, yam powder. Let's give the let's give it a different kind of paper so we can um, really see the color it creates. Ooh, it is a bit lighter than I imagined it to be. Let's see what happens when we mix it with a little bit of water. Whoa, look at the intensity of that color. That is a very nice purple, but it does conk up my fingers a bit. Almost paste-like. The pasty parts is a lot darker. These are some of the found colors that we have. Shall we try and explore and see 
what are some of the colors our vegetable crete Let's see what color that the beet creates. We can rub our fingers on it. Make sure to load it nice and up. We got some nice soft pink. Can you see that soft pink? That's a very pretty color. Perhaps if we score it a bit with the fork, it can bring out Oh, look at that. Can bring out some of the fresh juice inside it. That's a nice darker pink. I like how the fork creates some different mark making as well. Let's see what color that the carrot creates. Oh, you can barely see the orange of the carrot. I'm just gonna wipe my fork so we can see if we can scrape some of the carrot colors. The carrot creates some nice, very, very light orange, if you can see that clearly. Now, let's see what color that the tomato creates. Hmm, I think the tomato doesn't create much color at all. But perhaps we can use it in a different way. Well, maybe we'll try a little napkin. Let's try one of the brown napkin to see. Maybe if we use the juice of the um, tomato, we press it down. It can create some nice circles. Maybe if we load it up with a little bit of our food coloring, We can use it kind of like a stamp. Ooh, that's a nice fun circle where all the colors kind of bleed together. Let's see what color the bok choy creates. Do you think we are able to get some white in nature? I don't think the bok choy creates much color at all. But perhaps like the tomato, we can use it to create some different marks. Let's see what color should we load it up with. Maybe we can um, try it with some of the soy sauce. Maybe we can rub soy sauce all over it and see if we can get some of the texture from the bok choy. Give it a nice press. Make sure to get all the corners and edges. That is a nice print. Maybe there might be enough uh, leftovers to see if there's a different print. But look at this. I noticed some of the marks. You can see the swirl of the bok choy stem. And these marks here are the um, marks of the fork that we try to scrape to see if we can get some of the white. What a beautiful pattern, just a little bit of soy sauce and bok choy um, scrap can make. Maybe we can try some of the other uh, mark making tools that we have. Oh, we should definitely try some of the um, the onion stems. Let's see what marks it can create. Maybe we'll try that with a bit of the leftover tea that I poured out from my cup in the sink. Maybe we can dip it and see 
Mm. The tea is a little bit light. I cannot really see um, much of the colors. Maybe we can um, add it, add some of the pigments that we were playing with, um, some of the spices. Maybe we can add some of the cinnamon. Because it created some nice dark brown. And maybe some of the cayenne. Kind of want to keep it a little bit more on the brownish tones. Let's use our chopsticks to give it a good mix. Let's give it a test. Oh, that is a, little, a lot more darker. Let's see what marks we can use. We can create with it now. You can also turn your paper to see what other angles and maybe you can play with it to see what you will see. Kind of looks like a little owl to me. Maybe I'm going to turn it into an owl. played with a lot of our different materials. I kind of want to try to see if we can create a more of a dusty background and then work on top of it with some of our inks and our um, prints as well. Oh, this was really nice. Maybe we can use um, all of the things that we have learned um, and explored and all the different mark makings that we found and maybe we can piece it together to create something new. some colors that you noticed. What are some um, um, tools that you really, really saw how it moved across the paper? I really enjoyed when I turned my paper so I can see it from different angles and create something very, very different. Today I'm very proud that I played with some of the water, I played with some of the textures, and we created up and down motions, we did circular motions, and I like how when the bok choy did not make any colors, um, instead we used it as a stamp. Now that we have learned, Now that we have explored and we have played, it is time to clean up. Now all of these can go into the compost and don't forget we should make sure to wash all of the utensils that we have used. <laughs> 